No backdrop today. Thoughts? I don't know. So every single month I feature a fresh new set of 10 Android applications that I think you guys would get a real kick out of downloading and trying out on your own phones. Now, 99% of those apps are downloadable via the Google Play Store and that's often the preference because it's a safe and reliable method of ensuring that the apps that you're downloading are not going to harm your phone. But for those with any experience in sideloading applications, which is probably a lot of us, you'll know that some of the actual best apps are ones that are not available on the Play Store at all. And it's not actually because they're dangerous or unsafe for your phone. It's only because Google doesn't like the functionality that they offer. So with that said, today I'm showcasing nine applications that you cannot find on the Google Play Store. You ready? Let's go. Okay, by far and away, my favorite app that is hidden from the Google Play Store is the Gcam port. Now, there are actually many, many different versions of this app, and it's not to be confused with the Google Camera app that you can download via the Google Play Store, but the Gcam port is essentially the Google Camera app that ships exclusively with Google's Pixel phones, but it's been modded and ported over so that it can work with non-Google phones. This means that pretty much all of the camera features that are essentially what make Pixel phones worth the money in the first place can now be utilized on other phones. So features like Google's own night sight or their portrait mode, which is definitely one of the best in the industry. But the best part of all is that using these ports means you get access to Google's image processing, meaning photos taken on non-Pixel phones now look like they were taken on Pixel phones. So you can kind of see why Google doesn't want this readily available on their own Play Store. All right, second up is another Google exclusive app. Well, exclusive if you use the Google Play Store's definition, but it is their very own sound recorder application. So a lot of Google's apps are available for you to download via the Play Store, regardless of the phone that you use, but they do really only reserve their best apps for their Pixel phones. And there's a reason why you can't find the recorder app on there. And that's because it's so damn good. It's got a clean design and it's nice to use, but what really makes it outstanding and in its own league is its transcription service. So anything that you record using this app is actually automatically transcribed at the same time. This means that if you're someone who has lots of audio recordings stored on your phone, well, rather than having to play every recording to find what you're looking for, you can just search through each of them using keywords and even navigate through the audio recordings themselves using keywords as well. Now, the last time I checked, you do need to install a specific version. I believe it is version 0.5 for the transcription service to actually work, but it's a great app that you can't find on the Play Store. All right, next up, we've got an app that isn't officially by Google, but it does emulate an app that Google makes, and it's called Bromine. This app is what's called a Chromium fork or a version of Google Chrome. So it looks and feels very familiar, but it includes a few features that Google doesn't approve of. The main of which is that it's all about bringing back privacy, essentially blocking trackers and making it really obvious when sites are using cookies and so forth. And this means that you can go about browsing the web without worrying that you're all of a sudden gonna start being inundated with ads that are related to what you were browsing. Oh, and speaking of ads, it also has an inbuilt ad blocker, which works pretty well. Now, Quick Tiles is an app that has more mainstream versions available on the Play Store, but none of them are quite as powerful as this one, which is why it's not available on the Play Store. So in short, the app lets you place additional tiles into your quick settings panel. And a lot of the tiles let you perform fairly granular functions that would otherwise force you deep into your phone's settings menu. So to name a few, there's a tile that lets you open the camera, a tile for taking screenshots, a tile to set the animated duration scale and to disable all of the animations on your phone. And there's even tiles for controlling your media. And that list barely scratches the surface. It is a really nifty app if you're all about that quick settings life. Now apps that allow you to remap the physical buttons on your phone are often notorious for not being allowed on the Play Store. And so it's no surprise that Skip Track is one such app. I've actually featured this particular app on my channel in the past, but it essentially enables you to remap a long press of your volume keys so that they can control any media that is playing. And here's the cool thing, they can do so whilst your screen is off. Now you do need to run an ADB command to get the app to work. So I'll leave a link to an XDA article with the instructions on how to do this below. And keep in mind, there is actually a similar app that you can find on the Google Play Store that allows you to do a similar function. 
but it is paid, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, another app in a similar vein is called TapTap, but instead of letting you remap your phone's existing buttons, it actually creates a button of sorts. So this app is basically designed to recreate the somewhat newish feature found on iPhones where you can double tap the back of the phone and it activates some sort of shortcut. It works in just about the same way and you can adjust the sensitivity of the function as well, but the amount of actions to choose from that will launch when you double tap the back of your phone is kind of staggering. And the cool thing, well, the app works pretty well. I'm not gonna say it's perfect, but it's better than expected for a third-party application. Now, DarkU is another app that I've featured on my channel in the past, but this is an app that really allows you to maximize where the system-wide dark theme is applied on your Android device. Now, some permissions do need to be enabled via an ADB script to get the app to work properly, but from there, the app will essentially use Android's hidden force dark setting to take apps on your phone that don't natively support a dark theme and it will intelligently convert various components of the app. So the backgrounds, the icons and the text and this forces them to have a dark theme applied. It honestly works pretty well, although keep in mind some apps will look a little funky because of the conversion process. And it's also worth noting that apps can disable the force dark coding, so some might not work, but I've used it with apps like Facebook, the Service New South Wales app, and the Instagram preview app, all of which do not have native dark modes. Now, the last two apps today are also root only applications, but they're also probably two of the best apps that you can't get on the Play Store hands down. So I just had to include them in today's video. So the first app is of course the Magisk Manager application. It is hands down the best and safest app for handling anything related to rooting your phone. And whilst one of its main functions is helping you with the actual rooting process, which I have made a tutorial on before. So if you're interested in that, I'll link to it up in the cards. It also plays host to all of the best and most up-to-date Magisk modules. So modules are the things that actually let you modify your phone. And to be honest, if it's not found in the Magisk repository, then it's worth questioning how legit the module in question actually is. And so the last app not available on the Play Store is actually a Magisk module itself. And it's called Quick Switch. And this app has gotten a lot of airtime on my channel over the past couple of years. And that's because it was probably, no, it was the number one reason I started rooting my phones. So if this is your first time watching a video on my channel, well, Quick Switch is an app that lets you replace your phone's stock launcher with any supported third-party launcher. And the reason for doing this is gestures. Ever since Google started making gestural navigation a thing, the gestures themselves were actually baked directly into the launcher, which is what allowed them to have those nice and integrated animations. But it also meant that if you were using gestures in conjunction with the third-party launcher, well, the experience became a little bit clunky. So using Quick Switch solved this issue. Well, at least until Android 11 came around and now it's taking all of those launches that were once supported quite some time to update to the new Android 11 code. But if you're running Android 9 or 10 and you have a rooted phone, well, this is a must have app in my book. And so there it is. That was nine of the best apps that are not available on the Google Play Store. If you have any other recommendations for apps also not found on the Play Store, please let us all know down in the comments below. And who knows, maybe I'll put together a second episode in the future. If you enjoyed this video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and Twitter for behind the scenes content and access to promo codes for paid apps that I release each month. Aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.